If you're able, would you please stand and join me in our call to worship, our opening prayer, and our first hymn. Let us prepare our hearts as we await the coming of our Lord. Let us watch for the one who heard our cries and shouldered the suffering of our world. Let us anticipate the coming of Christ's eternal world with wholeness, reconciliation, and plenty for all. Let us wait in expectation for the day when God's glory is revealed in all its fullness. Let us pray. Saving God, long ago you sent your son Jesus among us, but we have been little aware of his presence, and we hide him even from others. Wake us up, make us recognize him, that he may be the light of our lives, and that we may eagerly lead people to him. May he build up among us and with us a world and a kingdom of peace and love. May we serve you and one another as we move forward in hope to your home of endless joy and rest. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first hymn, or our only hymn, number 88, verses 1, 6, and 7. Please be seated. On behalf of the congregation and session of this church, I welcome all of you who are here, especially our fellow members from the community. Uh, we're glad you're here for the second of our three Advent services and luncheons. Um, after the service, you're invited to stay for soup and sandwich, go through either one of these doors um, and get in line and enjoy a good meal around the table. Next Thursday, on our final service, we'll have a special program of music provided by Carla Castine, Vera Coombs, and Randy Bittner, and I hope that you'll come and invite your friends. Today, we're pleased to have providing our music uh, the Wallace United Men's Methodist Men's Ensemble. Uh, I told these guys that when I was coming over here and came through the fellowship hall and heard the music over the speaker, I thought Lee Woodard was in here listening to his iPad again, or his iPod, <laughs> until I came in and realized it was live and in person. So you will be blessed by these gentlemen singing. We're also very honored today to have Dr. Austin Obasahan as our speaker. Dr. O is the superintendent of the Duplin County Schools. Uh, it's been my privilege to work with him in different ways uh, in the schools. 
but quite a privilege to count him as a friend. And to, uh, we enjoy when he and his family come and worship with us here. So we look forward to your message here today and thank you for being with us. morning. Thank you so very much, uh, Reverend Biden, and uh, the wonderful message. Zambo. What an awesome, awesome music. Thank you so much, and thank you to the wonderful church. I want to do a couple of things this, this morning, and I want to thank Mrs. Castine. Uh, Carla Castine, which I asked her, what should I talk about? You know, when I was preparing for this, I didn't know what to say. She told me, just be yourself. Talk about children, school, whatever you want to talk about. But I said, okay, I'll do that. And um, I'm not a pastor, and I'm just so glad that uh, Reverend Gladden would allow me to share this pulpit with, with you. But what I want to do this morning is basically three things. I want to thank you and thank this church for what you stand for, for answering your call, then i like to leave with you a charge. And also, finally, in closing, I want to just share with you what our children, the life and the future of our children in Duplin County Schools and how we see them and how we should continue to see them. So first, I want to say thank you very much because um, People just don't understand the work that churches do in the community, and especially a church such as this, and that is led by a very spirited and a godly pastor, like Pastor Gladden, which I've learned to respect and know very well. He's, he's one of those people that hold my hands and, and say, well, you know, you're going to, whether you like it or not, you're going to stay the course, um, and which we all should do. And I want to also thank someone because the man standing here speaking with you right now is superintendent of Duplin County Schools. But I want to tell you that I was a dirt before I became a superintendent. You Christian, Christians understand the word. What I mean by that is 
God has been so good, and it's a merciful God that can turn stone to bread, water to wine, and even dirt to a superintendent. So, I just want to tell you that and encourage you that this season that we celebrate is a special season, a special season. But you know what? We serve a God of all seasons. So which means that Christmas will come and then go, and then another season will take, will come in. So as Christians, I just want to remind you what my mother told me when I was growing up. I didn't quite understand what she meant because I was too young to understand that vocabulary. But as I started getting older and the rain started falling more on me, then I realized I need an umbrella. So the five C's of Christmas, the five C's of Christmas, I just want to leave that with you this morning. The first one, the first C is Christ, which of course, this is a season we celebrate Christ. The second C is children, and I'm going to get back to that later on in my closing. The third C is Christianity. The fourth C is church. And then the last C is community. So if you look at all of those things, they have something in common. Every one of those have its own purpose. So when we talk about Christ, we know a child is born, and that child is a gift to all of us. Then we talk about children because the Bible tells us in the book of Psalm 127, verse 3 and 4, I'm not going to read it. It said, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is a reward. So in other words, every single child born is a reward to all of us. But these children born cannot have a life unless they go through church, the community place service purpose, to teach them the way that they should walk so when they grow up, they will never depart from it. And it also tells us in the Psalm 127, verse 4, that children are like arrows in the hand of the warrior, and that children, so as children is in our lives. Now, look, talk about Christianity. We talk about the Word of God. We talk about church. The churches play a critical role. I tell people, the father. Some people say, they know my natural children. No, it's not about whether they know your natural children. If you're a Christian in one of those five C, you understand that the command that God gave about his children is that we should treat them as a gift, as a reward, which means every children, all children in our community is a blessing to our community. So if they are a blessing to our community, we must treat them as a precious gift from God. We must treasure them. We must nurture them. We must love them. We must embrace them. Because he said also in the book of Jeremiah that before I formed you, I knew who you are. He also said before you came out of the womb, I sanctified you, children. So with me, if you look at it in the Bible, I'm not a scholar in the Bible. I'm just a servant. I'm not a scholar. But if you look at anywhere in the Bible you see children, it's either followed by a command from God or a celebration of such, which means that children are very important, very important. Not only are they the future of our community, but they are the main reason why we exist. So... What I want to share with you this morning is many times people ask, why do you separate, why would separation of church and state? But I tell them, I, 
I just don't know how you're going to separate a church, I mean, separation of church and state. I don't know how you can teach a child and take the church away from them and say the school is over here, then the church is over here. When you look at the five C's of the Christ in us, the Christianity, which is our purpose, and the place, the house in which we exercise and worship and bring more people in, and then the community in which the church is built in. So me growing up, I said earlier I was a dirt, and, 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 and I said that with, all, with great humility because if God can do wonders, he can do wonders in everyone. So it is up to us as, as educators and as citizens to remember the calling, to remember our purpose here on earth. It takes all of us to give a child a special, special blessings. If you look at the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12, 13, 14, 18, and even 21, which is my favorite, it talks about how all of us are one body. How it says in verse 21 that even the, 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 the eye cannot say that, 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 that the, the, eye cannot, the eye cannot say the hand is of no good, or the head cannot say that the feet is of no good, which means we are all unified. We are one people regardless of where we worship, regardless of where we're born, regardless of our color. Because what is most important is that we see that dream in every child. You don't look at the jacket a child wears. You don't look at how a child comes to us. You look at that dream that God has put in their womb. So as Christians, it is our responsibility to fight that battle on behalf of children. So that is why I take my job very seriously. It's not because so I can get paid. Of course, I love getting paid so I can take care of my family. But because I am committed, I know that nothing in life can come without the word of God and without doing his work. And when you do his work, we know what happens. He did not bless us so that we can put it on the shelf. He blesses all of us so we can pass that on to our children. So we cannot say we've earned everything when we've not done anything for our children. So the charge and the command I want to say to all of us is that, that children are so important because children dream because when God put them in their womb, God knew who they're going to become. It is up to us as Christians, as a church, as a community, to make those children realize their dreams. We know our teachers does, they do a good job in the classroom, but it's not only the work of the teachers. They're going to have to go through some challenges to get to their destination. So the work of the church is so important, and the work of the school system it's equally important, but it's no more important than when the church and the school work together and the community work together. Then we have a successful body of Christ. So in closing, I just want to say how honored I am. I was just thinking the other day, um, what would I say if somebody asks me not to talk about who my maker is? I said, I really don't know what I would do. I probably would just leave this earth. I would just want to leave this earth because we are so proud of the God that we serve because we know it gets so lonely at night, so lonely. But he said the morning will come. And he said every morning he will renew our, his mercy upon us. So we need to stay fast and steady course and continue to worship him and trust him and know that he's God of every season, not only Christmas. It's the God of every season. Now our purpose may be for a season, but we serve a God of all seasons. We take the challenges, we take the adversity, we take all kind of stuff. So as Christians, I want to leave a metaphor for you. Those of you who know uh, Wallace Bulldog is going to be playing on the championship team this Friday. We thank God for that. But I want to leave a metaphor for you as Christians what our challenge is. And that is in football, they have three aspects of the team. They have the special team, they have the, the uh, offense, and then they have the defense. 
But Christians, we are the special team. We are the special team because we don't have to be the quarterback. We don't have to be the defense. But our job is to make sure we put the team in a position to win. Our job is to go to the huddle. When you look at special team, special team does, everybody makes a special team, both defense, offense, whatever. They want to make sure that Christianity, I mean, the, the, the team wins. So that's why as Christians, we have to go beyond whatever the obstacles are, work together as one body, and then make sure we bring more people to Christ and those children that God gave us, that we, they fulfill their dreams because it'll be our, it's our responsibility if they don't succeed. It does not matter whether you were born in this hospital or that hospital. If you are a child of a parent, then it is our responsibility to treasure that child because that child is a reward to all of us. So I thank you so much and I want to encourage you, thank you for supporting public schools and continue to do that, whether doctor, with or without Dr. O. But the calling remains that we cannot take lightly the future of our children. Because the more we bless our children, the more we bless. Very often, we count those things we don't have and never count the things that we have. If we continue to count the things we have, we'll receive more blessings. And children, the best gift of all. Thank you, and Merry Christmas. Fellowship around the table. We ask you to bless us as we go our way.